Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play. We're gonna go real uh, hard. <laughs> wow, that was terrible. Uh, at Elite Zoo South. Uh, folks, I'm pretty sure the... Um, <laughs> wow, that was, that was, wow. Oh man. Yeah, I think I might actually be sorry for that one. No, you know what? No, I'm not. Let's, let's dive in, folks. So, um, <laughs> I'm sure the thumbnail or the title or, or something or the other or that horrendous pun it gave it away <laughs> but uh, today's session we're gonna be adding a new animal and the animal we're going to add is the gorilla wow that's actually what are the chances that this works out um, I've been a little bit kind of mysterious about this I don't know why it just felt like the thing to do um, I don't know I, I don't know I hope I hope y'all enjoyed it I guess but I I, I didn't want to give away what my plans were for um, you know, that far kind of left-ish area around the, uh, the 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 tortoises. I didn't want to give away what my plan was for that because um, I, I don't know. I just I, I had plans and I was like, well, we'll make it a nice little surprise when the episode finally comes around. And here it is. This is the episode. This is where we finally do it. I've touched on a handful of reasons. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> wow. You know, I th yeah, I think I am sorry for that one. Um, I, I, I've gone over the handful of reasons that I have for uh, focusing uh, on this part of the zoo before I prioritize anything else as we zip by. Boom, there we go. Um, it's largely because of the, um, the the train stop over here letting people off. Uh, they'll be you know hopping down. They, they walk around over here with nothing to see for what basically translates to miles upon miles of walking until they eventually get down over here and they get to uh, engage with these uh, magical tortoises of ours, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, so I feel like this is a bit of a priority. I've, you know, doesn't this kind of actually very vaguely look like Australia? Hang on a second. Or have I got, or is it the inverse? I can't remember now. Um, what am I looking for? Zoopedia. Just look at the world map over here. Yeah, 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 it's got like, got the up and the down and the back up. Yeah, see, I'm not. Huh. Y you know, I wish I could see. There we go. We can kind of see both at the same time. Not entirely off. Well, it's not clear enough. Not entirely off. That's a, a happy coincidence because you've got like the, the, the dip in over here as well. Like the little dip in over here. We got this up, down, up thing going on, which you've got this like up, down, up thing going on. I mean, it's not, you know, it's it's not an exact replica, but it certainly is an uncanny coincidence. Uh, nonetheless, uh, coincidences and my ramblings aside, yeah, there's lots of reasons to, to, to focus over here, not only because this has kind of been left behind for a little while, uh, but also because there are a couple of changes I want to make to the overall layout. Um, there are, you know, there's the whole, you know, train station board guests uh, situation to consider as well. We want to try and encourage guests to use the trains to not just get off over here, but then to further go all the way up here to check out the lines from this angle. Uh, so there's that uh, aspect of it as well. There's, there's lots of reasons to uh, to focus over here. Um, as far away as it is, right now having just one animal over here uh, is certainly not doing us any favors, I imagine. So um, hopefully that'll help uh, help in a few different ways. Now, uh, with that said, I just want to touch on the fact that um, I have received uh, a few uh, sort of sponsor board requests. I want to make sure that you all know that I have received them. I've noted them down, fear not. Uh, but I won't be implementing these sponsor boards probably until next week, uh, only so that we have the opportunity to add an animal in uh, sooner, get a get, you know get some work done. Um, because I feel like we've not done that in a while, and I certainly want to uh, dive in, get a new animal in. And, and then perhaps next week, maybe mid next week or early next week, we'll have those sponsor boards in as a part of a beauty pass, um, maybe a lighting pass or something. I'll, I'll figure out exactly what we need in terms of that beauty pass, uh, but we'll definitely be needing, uh, we definitely need one. There's still a lot of work as far as beautification is concerned. There's still a lot of work to do here and there. And um, I want to make sure, you know, we, we, we pay attention to all aspects moving forward, especially with, you know, like Darwin's Den. Maybe what we'll do is we'll have that. Uh, the sponsor boards added at the same time as uh, completing this left side of Darwin's den. As many of you have pointed out, like these things right now don't have any supports or anything. Uh, and that's for sure not the plan. The plan is to actually build some structures over here. But, uh, you know, right now they're just kind of floating there. And I, yeah, <laughs> don't like it. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll sort that out as well. Let's go ahead and hit play for a moment, though. We're going to go 
uh, with our usual approach to adding animals. I call it our usual approach. By that, I mean our Elitsu South approach to adding animals. And that is, of course, to first, um, you know, read about them, familiarize ourselves with the animals, uh, what they need, what they like, what they look for, and then um, and then build the uh, the enclosure accordingly. Ooh, looks like we've had a new um, baby over here. Alawa. Oh, wow, look at those stats. Now, it was actually pointed out that um, last session I traded out a lot of our uh, lions, and uh, I was... Ooh, ooh, got some bad stats over here as well, unfortunately. Ooh. Oh, right, you know what? This is probably... Did you see that? Oh. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad we came to check up now. Uh, this is almost certainly because of the uh, the inbreeding that uh, we I think we just barely missed, uh, which really is uh, quite unfortunate. But we you know we we've, we fixed it now. We 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 were going to you know avoid that problem in the future. Uh, what do we got over here? Overcrowding. Mm -hmm. How are you overcrowding? How are you overcrowding? We've got one and two. And why are you so upset? Not enough space. Is it because the game thinks you're stuck over here? If I move you just out to over here, will everything be okay? I think that's the problem here. So I want to make sure. No. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Let's take a quick look over here. Habitat. I have this room, but for some reason... Oh, you know what? It's the other problem. I don't... I just don't understand... When this started happening and why. There it is. I just had to click on that, you know, press the move tool. Not actually move it, just re replace it down. And the game recalculated everything. And I imagine we maybe have a similar situation over here. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Yeah, it seems to be the case. Sex. Done. And problem. Presumably. If I could click on the monkey. The sentence I never thought I'd say. Uh, done. Alright, cool. Yeah, it's weird. It's, uh, I don't know what's gone. I don't know what's gone on. Like all these uh, little issues, they they didn't. They were never a thing at Elitsu North, right? So must have been an update. A Malawa is about to mature. I imagine I need to put you on contraceptives. Why are you hung? Oh, are you playing with Dad? <laughs> that was amazing. I'm so glad to have caught both of those moments. I'm so glad to have caught both of those moments. Coverage is a little high over here. I wonder if it's because of one of these hanging over yeah, ever so slightly. That's the only change I can think of, right? So we can rotate you a little bit, pull you back a little bit, perhaps. Still a bit of coverage over there, but hopefully not enough to cause trouble. Oh, there's the pooping animal. That's how you know we're well and truly back. Oh, were you not pooping? Or are you just lying down? Oh, no. Okay, okay. I was going to say, so that's how you know Planet Zoo is well and truly back. Uh, yeah, looks like we are no, still seeing some trouble here. I'm just going to try and delete you and just see if that does the trick here. Or if it's more than just that. It is more than just that. Undo that then. In fact, that doesn't seem to make much of a difference at all. Wild. Well, is it both of you perhaps? That's the only other thing I can think of. In fact, they're all pretty unhappy. No, nope, that's fine as well. That's so weird. They were... And they were okay until we added these, so you would assume that these are part of the problem. But it seems to not be the case. Uh, I could remove one of these trees or something, but I like the views they create, right? Like, I, I like the, uh, the, the, the viewing angles and, and the interest level they add to the viewing angles. Hmm. You know... This is also really starting to... I'm gonna be honest get grading. I've seen a couple of comments mention it last session as well. I was like, maybe it's finally time to switch to medium. Uh, it no longer feels like a challenge. Now it just feels like an annoyance. They were, the, the happiness was green at the beginning of this episode, as you might recall. And immediately, like within seconds of hitting play, it dropped down to orange. And it's just like, but why? But why? If it was a bit more sort of clear about what was causing those issues, if if guests communicated more clearly, like, I think a big part of the problem is that we are trying, we're not, we, we try, <laughs> we definitely bend the game's mechanics, right? Because we're trying to have, we're, we're trying to make something that's, uh, you know, maybe show-worthy, if you will. Go ahead and 
Oh, the mechanic to this. I mean, this is obviously upsetting people because they can't use this ATM, so they're upset about that. But is that really enough to, to get people from being super happy to being, you know, so upset that we're losing money? Is that really all it takes? Like, come on. <laughs> it is making people very upset, though, isn't it? Mechanic on route. Where are you? Right over here. Run! Faster! Faster, Marilyn! Faster! I want to see if that immediately changes things. It, it is... I, I've... Uh, like I've said previously, right? For me, hard difficulty. I've enjoyed it because of the challenge. I've enjoyed it because of the... Uh, you know, the, it's it's added another layer to the game that we didn't have before, etc., etc. All that stuff, right? Um, we've overcome it not just once, but twice. Maybe even three times, it feels like. We've overcome it time and time again, but it ultimately it ends up feeling like, you know, guests are just unhappy. There's a bin right here, right? This is the kind of stuff that, I, like, this is what I mean by it gets grating. Like, there's a bin right here. There's literal. there's absolutely no reason for this. Absolutely no reason for this. I'm going to pause for a second so I can take care of the alpha fighting as well. I think I might actually just drop it down to medium difficulty. It's starting to get to that point where, like, I feel like we've uh, we've proven that we can uh, tackle um, our difficulty. It's just a matter of, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to phrase this. I think we've proven that we can tackle hard difficulty, but I think it's gotten to that point where now tackling hard difficulty is just getting in the way of a good time, you know? Which is really... Um, it's really quite a bummer. Um, I was having a lot of fun, <laughs> but then you get stuff like this, and it's just like, well, I can't, I can't do anything. About, I can't, I can't do anything about this. There's two bins. There are two bins on either side, and you're gonna go ahead and do this, and then happiness is gonna drop. Like, what am I supposed to do about that? How am I supposed to like? I can't justify staying on hard difficulty if if it's not going to be fair about hard difficulty, right? I'm doing everything, this is, like, this, honestly, this is, this is a picture-perfect example. I'm doing more than what is reasonable to tackle, um, guest unhappiness from certain aspects in this case, like, literally specifically over here. And yet, the game somehow manages to get guests to litter, and then that obviously affects happiness, and that affects our profits, and it's just like... Well, what's the point then? <laughs> what's the point? It's hard difficulty. The AI is not supposed to be blind to recycling bins. It's hard difficulty means I have to do more. What more can I do than this? Do I also put bins up on this side? Like, is that really the solution over here? I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. If I sound like I'm uh, losing my mind, it might be because I am. But, alright, listen, let's do this. I'm going to put a pair of bins over here. I never want to see this again. This, I throw it out to, to y'all in the comments again. Let me know what you think. I think it might actually finally be time to, yes, flip over to medium difficulty. Uh, again, I feel fairly uh, satisfied that we've been able to um, overcome the challenges ourselves. There's Malawa over here, young and virile, one would hope. Yes, he is. So, Aboyami, or rather, Abayomi. Uh, let's keep you around. Might still have a baby or two in him. Let's go ahead and send Malawa. Oops. Go ahead and send Malawa. Mark him as a keep. Send you to the Trade Center. We'll bring him back out. It shouldn't just be a keep, actually. It should be an A star, let's be honest here. Very good stats. In fact, A star star. Just want to make it crystal clear so I don't make a mistake. Um, but yeah, uh, as I was saying, this is like... I, I think I'm, I'm comfortable enough saying that, you know, we've been able to tackle guest happiness. Uh, it's come down now to this kind of stuff. I literally, I had to drag a keeper over who was just wandering. Oh, God. Oof. I, wa I want to stay in hard mode. That's the, that's, it's so difficult. I want to stay in hard mode. But if it keeps doing this to me, if it keeps toying with my heart like this, it's just gonna, going to, um, you know. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna grind away at that willpower. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Well, I mean, let's see. Let's see if these two bins... Because there's been litter here a couple of times, right? So, let's see if having four bins within, what, like, 20 square feet does the trick over here. And the ATM is another thing. I mean, if we take a look at our staff here, 
in Australia. Well, we have you in Africa West with low workload. We have you in South America with low workload. So we have you in Australia with low workload. Well, then why aren't you... Why was that litter not cleaned up? <laughs> you know? It's like, okay. I was, I was willing to take on the blame if I saw that everyone at uh, Australia had an efficient workload and that's where the problem came from, but it's not even that. And even then, efficient workload means things should be working smoothly. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> my, my raging rampage set aside. Ah, no, there it is again. Alright, you know what? I, okay. I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm done talking about it. Uh, we're not gonna flip to, to medium today, because I do want to know what y'all think in, uh, in, in, in the comments. But, uh, like as, as, as I was saying. I think we've proven that we can do it. It's just a matter of time. And when we're doing a series like this, we don't always have the time per episode to dedicate half of it to guests being grumpy, you know. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll swap that around next episode potentially. Again, I will keep an eye out for any, uh, you know, dissenting opinions, of course. Feel free to share. Uh, just because I feel a certain way doesn't mean things have to be that way. So feel free to share your opinion if you feel otherwise, and we will, uh, you know, um, make our decision accordingly. Maybe I shouldn't have set up all these promotions over here, or all of the training situations. It is August. We're at negative 20k. Blood escaped animals. When did an animal escape? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> when did that happen? Why didn't I get a notification? Uh, what do we have over here? Vet research completed. That's for the common warthog. Okay, that's fully completed now. Going to keep unassigned for now because we are going to add a new animal that will need some research done as well. Um, I do want to check on a couple of things. What do I want to check on? Uh, right. I wanted to get a male kangaroo, right? Because we've got uh, only females here right now. I want to make sure that we get a male kangaroo in um, now that we have space in our trade center as well. All females infertile. Let's make sure before the others get infertile, we uh, we have someone. Um, so animal market. Go ahead and take a look at the red kangaroo, and then we can look at the gorilla that we're going to add. So, go here and golden boy. Well, that's certainly a name. Honestly, the name alone is making me bronze boy sell. Oh god, I, I don't think I can get myself to buy those. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Over here though. Minjara, 800 conservation credits, pretty good stats. Let's go and pick you up, buddy. 1.8 years. I'm not interested in our in the in the albino option over here. Let's go ahead, or sorry, the uh, leukistic, leukistic. Right, it's a hard C, I'm pretty sure. Go and get you, adopt you. Not very expensive, pretty good stats as well. Excellent stats, actually. Let's be honest. Let's not downplay the quality of that animal. And over to quarantine for you. And we do need a new pair of koalas as well. We do need a new pair of koalas as well. Because over here, they are both infertile. Well, actually, no, we have Madison. So if we just get a male koala, we'll be fine. Go ahead and rehome the two of you. Let's go ahead. Animal trading, animal market. Pick up a koala. If I could find my letters. I promise I know how to spell. K for koala. There we go. About to lose another animal. It's unfortunate. Ooh, no, none on none on sale. It's all financial investments, eh? Alright, fair enough. Fair enough. Lucas is the clear winner so far. Yeah, you know what? Let's go with uh, with Lucas, I think. Oh, it's pricey. Given our current financial situation. Fine, Benjamin. Go with you. The immunity kind of bothers me, but it's hopefully not going to be the end of the world there. Over to quarantine for you. Honestly, what's going on here? What's going on here? Animal food has gone back up. I mean, I guess we could empty out the lions a bit more again. They're not costing us all that much, really. I could take a look at upping some of the ticket prices, perhaps, for the trains and whatnot. We are getting a fair number of riders on these. 
might help us uh, make a bit more money. Let's go with like 17. We want to make sure it's not too high either. We want to make sure it's not too high. 15 for these. An entrance versus all the other ones, right? Oops, 15 for you. Let's go with 15 for you. This doesn't make any sense. It's November. Ooh, who are we feeding that much? What animal did we just get that cost so much to feed? Move you over to the kangaroo kuyong over here. Or is it just a matter of feeding timings over here? We got so many animals that need to be fed at the same time. We could, of course, move the little kids over to the trade center. Do as well to the trade center. See if that helps at all. I mean, again, they weren't very expensive last year. They weren't very expensive. Maybe this year they've been significantly more expensive. We'll see. We'll see. Got to be feeding, though. That's uh, costing us so much. I was comfortable when we were around 30k still. But this, I mean, this is serious business. And food is, like, the refunds are really not costing us that much. Uh, as much as, I mean, actually, guest happiness is impacting donations as well. I was going to say, as much as we think um, guest happiness is a big part of this, um, but the reality is guest happiness is a big part of this because guest happiness impacts how much they donate. Oh, do we have more broken things over here? No, these bins are just full. They make guests unhappy as well. You know what? I'm not looking to spend this entire session worrying about guest happiness. I think I think it's run its course. I think it's run its course. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to medium difficulty. If it, uh, uh, in all in all honesty, I can't uh, worry about recordings crashing and have, you know, this kind of stuff going on, having people drop off litter next to two separate trash cans affecting guests. I, I, I think we I think we moved to medium difficulty. <laughs> I think it's the right call uh, overall. But again, I'll make that switch right now. I was going to wait until next session. But if I do that, we might not even see a time lapse today, even though that's the plan. We might not be able to add a new animal for another year at this rate. Uh, if there are any uh, opinions contrary to going down to medium difficulty, let me know. It's had a good run. I say we did well. Uh, I say it's still manageable. I say we'd still be fine. Uh, but because this is a you know a show, I feel like it's 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 starting to sort of bite into the the entertainment factor a little bit, at least reading the comments from the past couple of sessions. But if you all disagree, feel free to let me know. Uh, but just going to do a quick cut over here and come back with it set to medium difficulty. Uh, we'll see how much of a difference that actually makes. I mean, who knows? Maybe it won't. Maybe we'll just uh, continue to have super upset guests and uh, and, and lose everything. Um, I, at least I think this will help guest happiness. Um, just by virtue of like staff not being tired as easily, etc, etc. There's a lot of things that, that come together for it. But uh, hopefully, I mean, we'll see. We shall see. It should allow us to start moving things, you know, pick up the pace a little bit and start moving things a bit more smoothly. Uh, hopefully starting next year we'll see better uh, better numbers. Man, that's that's quite, I don't know. It's a, little, it's a little bit of a bummer, but at least it allows us to move on to other, you know, arguably more important things than dealing with, uh, you know, uh, guests who don't want to throw litter properly into a bin. Let's watch the money hopefully rise. Uh, and also take a look at the animal that we're looking to add today. The Western Lowland Gorilla. Lowland Gorilla. Lowland? I always feel like it's it becomes like land is pronounced differently when it's put together like this, right? Anyway, super excited to add these guys in. They are critically endangered. <laughs> they are also known as Gorilla Gorilla Gorilla. That is not a joke. That is very much the case uh, but yes they're critically endangered the western lowland or lowland gorilla or gorilla 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 is native to cameroon equatorial guinea gabon republic of the congo and southern niger living and foraging in the rainforests swamp forests and abandoned farmland there they have black skin dark forward facing eyes a prominent brow ridge large nostrils and coarse hair which covers most of their body except the face ears hands and feet 
Males are much larger than females and when they mature, the hair on their backs becomes gray and they are identified as silverbacks. Gorillas live in small groups with a silverback in control of the females, younger males, and juveniles. The species is critically endangered due to deforestation, poaching, and the spread of disease. Young gorillas leave their home group for a new group when they reach adulthood, and this means that disease can spread very quickly among groups. The Republic of Congo is investing in, con in conservation of their rainforest to prevent deforestation and species loss. So, straight up I'm going to say, um, I find silverbacks, well I find gorillas super cool. Uh, they're, they're such intelligent animals. Um, there, I've seen, there's, there's so much, so many videos out there of like, you know, look at these gorillas, they're just like us, like, whether it's like using tools or caring for family or, uh, I saw it's like a great video of this gorilla, uh, the, the alpha of, of the group, you know, just standing guard as his family crosses a road, like a modern day, you know, like a road, like a vehicle road, crosses the road and this 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 alpha is just standing there making sure that none of the cars are able to pass as his family goes through like the level of uh, it's just i don't know they fascinate me they fascinate me so i've been very excited to add them in uh, because of this you know kind of personal i guess attachment or or, or interest in them or, or or what have you um natural habitat again you know, we've got a little space highlighted they do not um require you know water to swim in but we will be providing them water to drink from and they might choose to swim in that as well uh, and they do require some climbing, which is important to keep in mind. We will be, of course, taking advantage of that. Hoping to make a pretty interesting uh, setup, in fact, with regards to climbing. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to afford it. <laughs> but I do have some pretty fun plans with regards to uh, uh, to their, their climbing requirements. So I'm looking forward to exploring some of that. Um, looks like it actually adds more in terms of regions over here. I didn't see Angola mentioned up over here, did I? I did not. Okay, uh, another fun video uh, with gorillas is one of that little, may, many of you may have seen it, but the little girl who's like um, at the zoo, I think it's a little girl, it might be a little boy, uh, but a little child um, at the zoo uh, looking at a gorilla and like, you know, playfully beating their chest, uh, you know, because that's what we think about gorillas, it's like, oh yeah, beat your chest, right? Uh, playfully beating their chest and the gorilla is having none of it gets super upset because beating your chest is a sign of dominance among gorillas and that silver back is just like you can see that moment of like are you talking to me and just charges at the glass barrier and puts a crack in it if i recall correctly like what a show of power honestly i they're such impressive such impressive animals uh from like all aspects right uh, anyway, sorry, <laughs> I digress. Uh, all right, let's take a look at these species data over here. Social needs. Well, first, this stuff. So, oh, okay. They're actually bigger groups than I'd uh, anticipated. So we've got the one alpha male per group, but they can be up to one male with up to five females. So, fair enough. Uh, polygonous mating system. Neutral relation with humans, but of course, guests cannot enter habitats. Uh, we've got five foot six uh, while standing four foot five while standing males versus females 40 41 years life expectancy across the board and look at that weight difference so 308 pounds for males 200 pounds for females age of sexual maturity is at 10 years so it takes some time sterility unknown number of offspring per mating event is one nine month gestation period 60 month interbirth period and reproduction in captivity is average so you can see it's going to be a bit of a struggle uh to help with their status right they're endangered they're, they're critically endangered status uh but we will be releasing quite a few of them to the wild and, and hopefully using that to um gain some conservation credits but also to like be a part of so to speak conservation efforts social needs gorillas are social animals living in small groups with an approximately even split of male and females excuse me I guess we're not recreating that. There will usually be one dominant male, known as the silverback, although there can occasionally be two, a father and son, who lead the group when foraging or traveling. Like, how cool is that on its own, man? Like, honestly, that's so dope. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. I find that stuff fascinating. Uh, despite individuals within groups being unrelated, the females will have very strong bonds with each other and their silverback, not leaving him in favor of another male once their group has been established. 
loyalty first. Reproduction. When a female gorilla is fertile, she will slowly approach the silverback and attempt to get his attention by maintaining eye contact and puckering her lips. Uh, if he does not respond, she will pound the ground near him. If the bid is successful, the male will mate with her. Oh, this is very interesting. The mother is pregnant for eight and a half months before giving birth to one baby, which she will care for closely until the infants are around four years old, when their offspring begin to gain significant independence. At between nine and ten years old, young gorillas, both male and female, will leave their family group. Females will search for a group to join, whereas males will be solitary for some time, until they are mature enough to become silverbacks and form their own groups. Okay, so that's interesting for a couple of different reasons. Uh, particularly worth highlighting is uh, the fact that it is the female that is, you know, doing the whole mating dance ritual and whatnot. It's uh, like normally, typically, uh, right? It's it's always like the male that presents gifts or does a little dance or what have you to get the female's attention. Uh, but here we have we have the reverse where the female is is uh, is is is, uh, is trying to get the the male's attention instead. Pretty interesting. I don't think we've read that in any of the other animal you know codices we've read thus far. So that's what's interesting. Uh, research status. Now we've got uh, monkey chow as their basic food. We'll be unlocking their higher quality food sooner rather than later, I hope. And all of their toys match the capuchin. It looks like. We'll still have to do research, of course, to unlock fun facts and all that stuff, better education rating and all that kind of stuff. Interspecies enrichment, there is none. And that's all the reading that we have to do here, but um, a little concerned about this situation still. We are still seeing financial troubles. I mean, this won't be an issue anymore, obviously, as we can see, because we're in medium difficulty now. And what else can we cut down on as far as expenses are concerned? Um, food is the big one, isn't it? I don't know if gorillas are cheap to feed either. Now, happiness. Overall guest happiness will probably not change for a little while still because, um, because all the unhappy guests are still within the zoo. So they're still, you know, impacting the overall guest happiness. And I wonder how much that's affecting other things. Like, I wonder how much overall guest happiness is, is affecting overall guest donations and things like that. And see, this is another thing. It's like, your happiness is low, but why? Because you're tired? Well, have a seat, right? I mean, everything was okay. Why was it only okay? Give me some more details. I would love to know why. I'm stuck. What I can do about that? Spent too much time walking. That I've been trying to solve for a while. It's wild, too. Like, that's not something we saw much of at... Um, Adelitsu North. I don't recall seeing that uh, complaint come up too often. Spending too much time walking. Alright, that's part of the reason why we've integrated these, like, you know, train rides and all that. Well, hopefully they're seeing enough use compared to how much we're spending to keep them up and running. Because it, 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 it would, it would, okay, you know what? I might actually, you know what? Let's drop the price again. Let's drop the price again, down to 10 bucks. I know that sounds counterintuitive. We are not seeing any traffic and making making twenty dollars times zero guests is zero dollars. Making ten times a hundred guests is right, you see where I'm going. Go ahead and drop down to I was going I was going to ten, right? I believe across the board. By the way, ten times a hundred is a thousand for <laughs> before you think I stopped there because I didn't know the math. Now I have to double check ten times a hundred. Alright, got at least some some people coming up over here. Just about to miss that train. Gotta hustle, man. Gotta hustle. Move a little bit faster. On which note should these trains maybe be moving a little bit faster? I think we're okay. We could also take a look at exhibit trading. I believe we have quite a few in storage right now. Oh my god, how has this happened? All those beetles, that's how. That's how. Well, a little bit of a cash injection will go a long way, I suppose. Go for that quick trade. Let's do it. Done. At least it gives us... Oh, and look at that. Instant happiness as well. Why? Were you were you unhappy that I was broke? <laughs> is, is that what you were unhappy about? Whatever it is, it might be some of the unhappy guests finally filtering out. Hopefully together in conjunction with our selling there. Uh, it'll work nicely for us. We'll see. We'll see. Animal trading, by the way. Do you just want to very quickly look at the trade history? Before I dive into the time lapse. Um, Marjani ended up being sold as well as Pramanna. I believe we didn't catch 
there or do we catch uh javier here being sold last session no, I think a couple of these sales actually happened after last session stopped being recorded. Uh, we saw Ananya and Zira, I think Sneha, Rukia as well, I believe so. I don't think we saw Goritno get traded out. Goritno, Zawadi, Taban, James, Avier, um, Ramanna, and Marjani here. That's quite a few trades. That was a pretty good trade session. It was a pretty good trade session. Oh, you can see guest happiness. Fluctuating still. Nonetheless, gonna wait until the sun rises again. Shouldn't take too long, and then we can dive into our time lapse. I apologize. I was planning on doing it, you know, part way through the session. But it looks like it's going to be closer to the end of this session. Um, I could also just kind of you know, accelerate us to to the right time of day, I suppose. Every time the frame rate like struggles a little bit, I, ha I have to look over to see if um, if uh, the recording has crashed. This made me so tremendously nervous. Keep you around, and let's go ahead and keep you around. Everyone else at the Trade Center. Perhaps take a look at their fertilities and things like that as well, right? As we've learned, it is a thing to be concerned about. There we go. We're good. We're good. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, I do wonder about guest happiness there. That, that momentary glimmer of hope. Oh, no, there it is again. All right. All right. I don't know what's going on, but something... Uh, nope, and it's gone. <laughs> We'll see. I think it is a matter of guests coming and going right now. And it's back. We'll see. We'll keep an eye out for it. We will keep an eye out for it. Um, now, at nighttime, I'm actually... Uh, one thing I want to touch on is I think I want to do a nighttime beauty pass. Like, sorry, a, a lighting pass, I should say, when I do the next beauty pass. Uh, we're, things are coming pretty nicely together at certain hot spots. But overall, the zoo is still a fair bit dark, I would say. Especially if you consider, you know, accessibility. Uh, we just straight up don't have lights in certain places. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a nice kind of comfy space, but it is really dark. I might want to brighten it up a little bit more. Um, so I'm thinking the next beauty pass we do, it's going to have sponsor boards for sure. But do we do Darwin's Den or do we do a, uh, a lighting pass? And I'm curious to hear your opinions about that as well. Because um, it, uh, I, I could definitely go either way. The Both of those are, are things that we've been kind of like, sitting on for, for longer than than maybe I would have liked. I think is the, uh, the the right way to put it. Are we seeing more crowds up over here? We're not, eh? Maybe, maybe it's because uh, lots of people aren't looking to go where those trains take them right now. Hopefully the introduction of the gorilla makes a uh, difference there. Hopefully. Up over here, we do have some crowds forming. Now, that means these prices are maybe a little too low. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and adjust those prices a little bit. Go ahead and make you N and make you N as well. The reason for this is because we don't want crowds forming over here. As much as I would like their money, we do not want crowds forming here. We want to have a bit more of a fluid uh, movement. The unfortunate reality is that we cannot add more track to make this a loop. I mean, I could move this over a bit, I suppose, and make this a loop. Have it go over this way, pull back down this way, pull all the way back down this way. And up over here would stick out a little bit, but we could maybe potentially make it a loop. Something to look something to look at, something to consider maybe. Because if we make it a loop, we can have more cars. And if we have more cars, we'll have more constant movement. And we can have more guests up over here. Um, but right now, like what, like five or six of them get picked up at a time? And that was empty on the way back as well. And see, there's like one group and another group. So that second group has to just sit there and wait. I don't know how I feel about that. Right, a loop would solve all of that. And same thing up over here. If we have a loop, things would move a little bit quicker. Right now, not a lot of people are interested in coming down to here. I wonder why that is, actually. It's pretty interesting that it would be that way, but it is what it is. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Sun's rising. Almost time for our time lapse, then. But what else is there to concern ourselves with? I mean, guest happiness again through the roof. Look at that. Look at that. Everything's fine now. As I say that, of course, energy drops. Now, the funny thing about going into medium difficulty is that it doesn't actually affect guest happiness directly. What it affects is refunds, which is saving us money, and it affects staff fatigue. So we might just be seeing a coincidence here, really. It might, act it might literally be that those two new bins we added up over here, these two bins, solve the problem. <laughs> Strange as that sounds. Um, uh, staff fatigue obviously plays a role in everything as well because the, when they get tired 
less quickly, they're able to stay on the job for longer, so they're able to, you know, take care of litter and stuff more easily. So I think that might be what's doing it. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd point that out, that there's no direct correlation between happiness and um, difficulty. Uh, anyway, I think... Sun's not really high up enough. Come on, faster. I could just teleport us forward in time. I think we I think we go ahead and do that. Uh, so let's make our way over to the spot over here. My hope again is that we will have an interesting setup here that will draw the attention of our guests as they get off the train. We'll drive more guests to come to the tr or to use the train to hop off over here. They won't be bored on their way over. Uh, this path will actually also extend out this way because the plan initially was to have a set of tracks going the other way as well. And so that station would be up over here. But right now, at the very least, we can use this as a viewing um, viewing platform uh, to, to look down upon the, uh, the, the fascinating animal that is the gorilla. Um... The reason why I'm so hesitant to teleport time is because the game often crashes when I force time forward. And I'm, I'm doing everything in my power to try and avoid crashes. I mean, things have been going okay so far, but knowing my luck, in the middle of a time lapse, it'll crash and then we'll, uh, and I won't notice because I'll be in the zone. Down over here, still, still decently crowded. Also, still, like, no interest in going down over there. Interesting. Interesting. You know, an interesting experiment as well would be to flip back up to hard difficulty and see how long we can maintain guest happiness. Uh, but that's not something I want to concern myself with over here. How do guests actually feel coming out over here? The view of the jaguar from here is terrible. Are you kidding me? You're like in between everything. How can it be a bad view? How can it be a bad view? Let me just check something real quick over here. It's December. Like, we haven't made that much profit. I mean, a big part of it obviously came from the uh, sale of the animals in storage. Ongoing expenses. Income has skyrocketed. Ticket sales went up. Donations went up significantly. Guest happiness does that. We know this. All, all intertwined. Anyway, y'all let me know what you think about that decision. I'm going to go ahead and dive on into our time lapse. I think I've just about run out of patience for the sun over here. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward in time, and if it crashes, so be it, folks. It's time lapse time. All right, folks, really excited to share the results of this time lapse because once again, as I often try to do at least, uh, I'm taking a bit of an experimental route. Uh, with this enclosure. I'm not going to tell you whether it worked out or didn't work out or needed to be adjusted or edited or what have you, but uh, I'm, uh, I, I, again, as always, this is our first time lapse uh, at the beginning of an enclosure being established, so there is going to be a lot of work done, but the finishing touches will be left for a later time lapse, you know, perhaps next session or something like that, because it's always good, especially with something that might be a bit technically. Um, I don't want to call it complex. It sounds like I'm, you know, tooting my own horn. But if something is a little technically different, I suppose, it's a good idea to test to make sure it works before getting too ahead of ourselves. So uh, with that said, you will still see, I would say about like 90 or so percent of the work done over here with this enclosure. Uh, and heads up again, of course, naturally, I do need a name for it as well. So if you have any name suggestions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments down below, especially as you see it, you know, get completed and see what kind of a aesthetic and theme and idea I'm going for. Uh, but the first order of business actually is to adjust this area over here. Now many of you have pointed out a couple of times that the stair slash ramp thing didn't look very good, um, wouldn't work very well, etc, etc. I wholeheartedly agree. My initial idea for it, I, I initially, I hadn't realized just how big of a climb this was uh, when I first put it down. And so, more or less immediately after putting it down that first time, I was like, this ain't right. This doesn't match with what I was going to go for for this area. Uh, but I had a very interesting idea with regards to how a ramp and stairs could be made uh, very, you know, beautiful and ornate. However, that beauty, that style that I was initially going to go for doesn't work at this length of staircase. Uh, so I decided to scrap that entirely. We'll try and implement that somewhere else. Some other opportunity will surely come along. And instead, I've replaced it completely with a ramp. Now, first, I built a straight ramp just going from bottom to top, and I was like, yeah, this will be fine. And then immediately, I was like, no, this won't be fine. We need a bit of a landing, not just from an accessibility perspective as a nice spot to just, you know, rest for a while if you're going up this long ramp, but also um, just from a functionality perspective from the game 
were not able to put anything down on a slope. So we wouldn't be able to put down any bins. We wouldn't be able to put down any donation bins, any benches, none of that stuff. Um, I want to say you can't put down anything, I mean, you know, specific to those placement items. So I figured, all right, let's go ahead and put a landing in the middle and then continue up to the top. And hopefully that'll help prevent, I don't know, littering and what have you, right? Beyond that as well, though, I needed to do a bit more planning up top over here. Uh, I'm a little nervous, I'll be fully transparent, I'm a little nervous about how this region is going to play out uh, as we continue to develop it, as we continue to add more animals to it. I do have some plans with regards to how things will work out at the end of this time lapse, but at the beginning of this time lapse, it was very much like, I don't know how things are going to work over here. Oh wow, it's wild to, man, time moves a lot faster in a time lapse. Um, I, while I was actually doing this, a large chunk of time had passed, um, before I got to this stage, and so it's just wild to see it happen so quickly while I'm talking about it. Um, crazy. Time lapses make time go faster. Who would have thought? Uh, but yeah, anyway, sorry. Um, so I'm, I'm building an entire, like, river system up over here again. We have that river boat that's going to, as you can see, travel through over here. Now this I placed down so I could experiment with and see if the river boat ride actually allows you to go up and down, and it does not. Elevation changes are not an option with a riverboat ride. So I had to make sure that as this river goes towards the line enclosure, uh, it'll be, you know, we'll have to have stairs or um, a ramp or stairs and an elevator or whatever to uh, to, to make uh, uh, to, to make sure people are able to get away from the level we're at right now up to the level that the lions are at and what the rest of Africa is supposed to be at. So it's going to be an interesting challenge. I'm excited to uh, tackle it. And it's part of the reason why I'm glad that I did this, you know, today. That I carved all this out and I checked the uh, elevation changes on the riverboat ride um, and the fact that they're not possible so that I could plan ahead and we could all kind of look you know look at it and, and plan ahead accordingly now you're gonna see me here struggle a little bit with uh, water placement but eventually I figure out exactly where the problems lie and at that point it becomes a lot easier this water is not nearly as challenging as the water was up in uh, Ilitsu North uh, so we're not gonna have to struggle too much with that Ooh, it did just occur to me that I need to check to make sure this water is being filtered. Damn. I keep telling myself, like, remember, party, you gotta check this thing afterwards. Remember, party, you gotta check this thing afterwards. But, you know, the time lapse goes on for a fairly long time. By the time that time lapse comes to its end, it's just like, wow, I'm so excited to share. Let me just, you know, talk about it. And let's get the animal in here. So, uh, I need to remember to check that. Whoops. Uh, anyway, <laughs> with that note set aside, um, yeah, so just working around the, uh, trying to make an interesting body of water up top over here, trying to make use of bridges and stuff. We'll be building up, doing a lot of beautification in this area as well to make it all feel a bit more uh, appropriate or real. I might actually change what the pathing is as well. I don't think it really fits the region, if I'm completely honest. Um, it just yeah, it just doesn't work. So I'll probably be changing that as well. And you can see again, we have a slight ramp going up. We have to sh we have to slowly make our way up to the right level, right? And um, I'm thinking we'll have. Well, actually, I, I, you can see me right now talking to myself and just kind of carving out where the animals and which animals are going to go where. I talk about this stuff in a bit more detail after the time lapse as well, so I'm not going to uh, belabor the point too much. Um, but uh, you can see kind of with my mouse movements, I have plans for quite a few animals in this region over here. There are quite a few animals that would fit this region. Uh, there are quite a few animals that have some interesting uh, shared histories, uh, you know, genetic histories, I suppose I should say. Uh, that would work nicely in this region. Some excellent suggestions I've got in the comments from, I mean, several episodes, countless episodes ago now uh, that I'm looking forward to implementing finally. But uh, you can see, again, just kind of laying out the groundwork here so that nothing takes me by surprise three, four, five, six episodes from now when we're adding those animals and I'm just not like, oh no, I didn't think this through and now it's not going to work. That always, you know, is a bummer. No other way to put it. But over here, just adding more pathing as well to make sure guests are able to catch a view from over here and then establishing our entry. Again, just as a reminder, we carved that hole back there specifically for this purpose so that the uh, keepers and all uh, just the staff in general would have easy access to this enclosure because the, um, uh, the, the, the staff areas and stuff are right behind that, uh, you know, set of, uh, set of, I guess, ground, I suppose. But anyway, moving on from that, starting to establish the actual barriers over here, not getting the concrete down to, uh, I felt like it was the most, I won't call it simple, but it was, it has the right look to it and it is guaranteed to work. We might replace it later with a custom wall setup if something feels right. But for now, I felt like the concrete walls 
uh, did the job. And, and they look, especially when we get the glass in, I feel like they look quite nice, actually. Um, but again, we might we might change it. It's it's open for, for tweaking, of course. But for now, at least, it'll do a good job of uh, testing out, again, the enclosure idea. So as I start putting down these rock pieces over here to build what is going to be uh, another waterfall, another hopefully gorgeous waterfall, um, the idea here is that the gorillas will be able to hang out both at the base of the waterfall and at the top of the waterfall. I'm going to give them some varied ways of climbing to the top. Ideally, they would climb to the top and not just walk or, I guess, crawl to the top. Um, but I want to make sure that I have a, you know, a bit of a backup uh, readily available if push comes to shove, right? Now, there's... So that's one thing that I wanted to do, but it's a part of a bigger, uh, I guess, conversation as far as my uh, theme for the layout of this enclosure. Uh, maybe it's just in my head, but I've always felt like in all the footage I've seen or in all the, um, I mean, yeah, in all the footage and photography I've seen, uh, it always feels like gorillas spend a lot of their time in like deep forested, deep wooded areas, and then they like creep out, you know? And, and we see them when they creep out, when they reveal themselves. Uh, there's almost something intimidating about that, about these like magnificent, <laughs> massive animals that are somehow, you know, hiding in the bushes uh, and they could just like destroy you if you bothered them, if you looked them the wrong way, if you stepped the wrong way. There's something about that. Um, so I, I kind of build this enclosure to have a lot of that um, like densely wooded area slash open space back and forth. You'll see I use a lot of these, uh, I think it's the Kapok tree. I don't know how to pronounce that, so correct me if, uh, if you know better. Uh, I use a lot of that to make bushes, so to speak, because it feels like very nice and dense. So I use a lot of that. I use a lot of trees as well to build a canopy over top. The animals don't mind the amount of vegetation, so that's very promising. Uh, and I also use trees uh, not just for the aesthetic purposes, but also for climbing purposes. Now, I don't think the gorillas are actually able to climb these trees. The tamarind trees are supposed to be climbable, but they might be too skinny, uh, and therefore they might not be able to support the weight of the gorilla that's trying to climb it, uh, which is fair, which is why I kind of had a gut feeling that would be the case, which is why you also see me putting down those climbing logs, uh, just to make sure they're able to climb one way or another. Uh, you can see in the middle as well over here, we're going to put down... Uh, well, for now, it's only just the one tamarind tree, but we're actually going to put down a pair of tamarind trees, and we're going to build a little treehouse. What's more fitting for, uh, for, for gorillas than something like a little treehouse, right? Um, now, ultimately, they're not, I keep it pretty low, because, again, knowing that they're such big beasts, uh, chances are they're not going to be able to climb too high um, you know, in the in-game pieces and whatnot, at the very least. So I wanted to keep things reasonable. Uh, so I don't go too high, and I actually maintain a ground connection as well with these climbing logs because I had that, again, that gut feeling that the tamarind trees are not going to be able to actually support the gorillas if they were to try and climb it. Um, but yeah, so that's a little, like, treehouse kind of space over here. They can rest underneath, or they can rest on the, they can rest on the ground floor. They can rest on the second level, or they can just kind of hang out at the top. They will have hard cover as well, so they'll be protected from the elements. And apart from that, just putting down their toys and, uh, you know, food spots in varied places to make sure they're actually kind of quote-unquote forced, as it were, to uh, go around the enclosure. Again, guests will complain about viewing angles one way or another. This is one way that I can at least have some fun with an interesting enclosure, but also get the animal to travel around and hopefully get enough good views from multiple angles. I'm just going to add a little bit of green to these rocks over here, getting some inspiration from my other waterfall that's across the uh, ramp uh, to try and... Um, spruce this place up, but that's about it for this time lapse. I hope you all enjoyed the overall aesthetic and angle and approach I'm taking over here. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, and I'm curious as well to see how the animals actually work with this space. Oh, right, I do this as well. Um, I felt like having a nice little, like, plateau kind of a thing up over here works into our theme of the, you know, openings versus densely forested areas, and gives a better view from the tree as well, or sorry, from the, uh, from the train uh, station as well. But that's the time lapse, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse, and I'm pretty pleased with how that went. A lot of the uh, enclosure does rely on us doing some 
uh, work in real time as far as beautification is concerned. I think it's really going to come to life when this, uh, <laughs> our favorite waterfall uh, gets brought to life, obviously with special effects and whatnot, both up top and down over here. I think it'll just, again, like literally bring life to it as there'll, there'll be more, uh, you know, animated elements, there'll be more kind of sound and, and just visual uh, points of interest. But I don't want to get into all of that just quite yet. Again, those of you that are familiar with this uh, channel will know my preferred approach is to get the sort of get us to kind of 80% complete, get the animals in, make sure they're happy with the space, make sure we've not missed out any major issues or, or you know, potential glaring uh, circumstances. And, uh, and then we can kind of bring it to the finish line by, uh, you know, by taking the animals' uh, preferences and stuff into consideration as well. Obviously, that's been taken into consideration while building the space, but there might be something that I missed, maybe something that I didn't, uh, you know, catch or, or something like that. Uh, it should, should be a pretty fun space, though. I went, again, like I tried to do something that's maybe technically fun, um, more so than, you know, super complex in terms of structure. We will be, by the way, I've noticed a couple of comments with regards to... Um, uh, wanting to see more of those complex structures and stuff, some of them at least, like we had Elitsu uh, North. We will be getting some of that going as we push into, you know, this kind of central African uh, region of our of our zoo, uh, while over here we're trying to transition from this heavy wooded forested area over to kind of a plains area. We will start introducing more of those complex structures. Uh, don't forget as well, uh, the area where the giraffes will reside. By the way, I've, I have I think I'm pretty much set on making this like a, I don't know, maybe giraffe, zebra mixed enclosure over here or something. But this will have a structure attached to it up over here as well. So we are going to be getting into more of those kinds of uh, um, uh, spaces as well. And don't worry, yes, I know, I know, we need to do this. Uh, I think what I'll do is when I do that, I know earlier I asked, maybe we do a beauty pass or we do, like maybe we do a Darwin's Den beauty pass or we do a uh, lighting pass. Maybe instead I do sort of finishing this off, doing Darwin's Den and doing the um, sponsor boards all at the same time in one pass. Maybe I try to do that instead because this has been left like this for far too long and I, I see your comments. I, I, I think of it as an eyesore as well, so perhaps I should prioritize that a bit more than I already have. Uh, but nonetheless, back on topic. Uh, yeah, we are going to get more of those kind of structured enclosures and stuff as well. Some of those, you know, quote unquote, uh, larger builds. I mean, we've been, we, we've done a few, uh, uh, you know, architectural, I wouldn't call this an enclosure, but spaces. We've done some architectural spaces already, but I have seen a request for a few more of those here and there. And I'll, I'll definitely take a look at how we can uh, up the ante with some of these, uh, you know, upcoming enclosures as well. Uh, but as is often the case for me, I, I try to do a little bit of a, a technical push over here to see if the game will cooperate Often I do that at great expense, but I feel like there's a certain kind of joy or pleasure that at least I derive from it. I hope you all derive from uh, derive the same kind of happiness from it as well. Uh, but when I see an animal use a space in a way that might not be expected, but it works out um, because that was the intent, that makes me very happy. Much like the orangutan back in back at Elitsu North, right? The overpass there. I didn't know if it was going to work at first. It didn't. And then it did, and then it didn't again, and then it did. I I, I, I like doing those kind of kind of self um, self emplaced challenges, I suppose. Uh, so here, the hope is that the gorillas will be able to climb up through here and using the tree, or climb up using these little like you know, uh, I don't know, if, I don't know how well they can jump. I mean, ideally they'd be able to jump these gaps, but we'll see. If not, they'll be able to climb up this way. They'll have access to this sort of second level as well, where I'm going to put down the food to hopefully draw them up over here. The whole overall concept with this uh, enclosure was a uh, dense forested area with a couple of openings. Um, you know, for example, here, up here, and down over here as well. Uh, we'll see if they enjoy the space or not. I'm a little worried that I've overdone the tree coverage, but hopefully not. Hopefully not. Anyway, we're only going to find out. We're only going to find out. Sorry, by actually getting the animals in here. So let's work on that. Take a look at animal trading. Get ourselves some gorillas uh, from the animal market. Let's see if there's any good ones available right off the bat. We have a fair amount of conservation credits thanks to the uh, trade session from the last session, especially. Uh, so it is the, uh, right, it's not just the gorilla, it is the western lowland gorilla. And by the way, actually, uh, ooh, ooh, ah, come on, man, 10k? I know you're called Obi, but if it was the full name, I might have been convinced, but no. Sorry, 10k is just ridiculous. These are really not good stats. These are really not good stats at all. 
Wow. Wow. Um, one way or another, just really kind of bad. And nothing from, uh, from Frontier Zoos either. Hmm. 15 years. They live until like 41 or so, if I recall correctly. If we check Zoopedia, they live until 41. So there is still half a life to go there. Man. Yikes. Ooh, hello. That's significantly more reasonable. I'm not even waiting on that one. Good genes, decent price, bronze rated. Yeah, well, let's go for it. And move you from Littleton Parks over to our trade center. Maybe we wait on our... Uh, uh, I, I, honestly, I don't even remember if this is male or, or female gorilla. Uh, over to Quarantine Small. Yes. Make extra sure over here because I know we all get nervous about it. There we go. So that is our... Um, male gorilla taken care of. We're going to maybe wait on a female gorilla because not really the best stats over here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to start a... I don't want to start on a downward spiral. And you know what's really funny? I didn't check the age on the one that I scooped up immediately. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> that worked out. Knowing my luck, it would have been like, yes, 40 years old. Uh, but so we can, we can afford to wait a little bit until we pick up a female gorilla. Let's go ahead and unpause for now, though. Bring all the waterfalls back in. And yeah, I, I am very excited for this. Um, it's all it's all trees. It's all trees everywhere. Uh, I like it. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking very forward to uh, to this waterfall, though. I'm, I'm really quite pleased with how this space looks. Uh, I know I've talked about it before, but I can't I can't express it enough. I just I really like how this space feels. It's got it's just it's something that I've not done before. Right. And and so I, I'm really proud of this, actually. And I, I want to try and recreate that. Uh, feeling of pride, if you will, uh, up over here as well, and, and see what else we can do on the ground level as well. Again, like I said, it's about 80% there. The remaining 20% will take it from, you know, these, like, empty spaces where it seems like nothing's going on to that final stage, that final uh, feeling of completion. I also want to see if they're actually able to get up over here, and if they're able to escape up over here, I'll have to make some adjustments, obviously, right? But for now, again, we just wait for the animal to arrive. Uh, and hopefully, again, this will draw some guests out over here as well. I could start putting down some donation bins and whatnot. It's probably not a terrible idea. Um, so let's go ahead and get some of these less uh, less um, obnoxious-looking trash cans down first. Let's maybe move this tree a little bit so people aren't walking over a bunch of roots over here. But move you in just a touch. Lift you up a bit. Nah, keep you down over there. There we go. There we go. That makes a bit more sense. Let's go ahead and put down some uh, donation bins as well. If I could just find donation bins. There we go. Uh, I think we'll go kind of like a, a, a double black kind of a tone over here. Two-tone black. Because that is most fitting, I would say. So let's go with you. Let's go with you. Maybe a little too light there. A little bit darker would go a long way. There we go. There we go. Two-tone. Black on black. I like that. Good stuff. Keep the uh, keep the donation icon, the, the contrasted bright white. Quarantine passed already. Good stuff. A couple donation bins up over here in case people are watching from up over here. The rest will, of course, come down over here. Though we have donation bins in the area already. I want to try and put down some separate ones uh, for the gorillas too. I'm going to go ahead and put one up over here as well as a bin. Get one of these. Let's get you up over here like you're supposed to be. Let's go ahead and move you in here. Right? That should help a little bit. Do we need a trash can up there? I mean, famous last words, right? Famous last words. I know I need a trash can up there. Let's go ahead and do it. You know it's true. Put you on this side, perhaps. Then some education boards will obviously help significantly. Ugh. I know I know the bins feel like overkill sometimes, but at the same time, I can't help myself because of how the game has punished me in the past. For not doing overkill on the bins. Uh, let's put this down over here. Put you, oops, put you down over here. And then that way we can have education up over here, I think. Now let's see if that does the trick. Donation bin needs to be on the path over here. Cool. Let's go ahead and get our gorilla coming through. I want to touch on something else as well at the same time. Well, first of all, I want to mention before I forget, I will need a name for our gorilla enclosure over here. So feel free to get your name suggestions in. But I just want to touch on the situation up over here as well. Um, I'm not going to talk about exactly what animals I have planned for where because things might change. But this was a big part of the time lapse as well because I want to make sure that we're in an appropriate 
the position for when the time comes to get these animals in place. I will be having a riverboat ride go from here, or maybe even start from here. I don't I'm not 100% sure just quite yet, but start from somewhere over here, go all the way up to over here. Hopefully that'll be quick enough, while the uh, footpath will go up this way. We'll probably have a couple of other animals up over here as well, and the, uh, the, the path will eventually come up to... Um, to to ground level might even cross over to have the ground level um pathing for the giraffe and zebra enclosure come like sort of come out of this we'll see lots of stuff to do over here but um just wanted to touch on that a little bit because i don't know how much time i had uh during the time lapse to to, to really talk about it properly uh, hopefully i'm not repeating myself i apologize if i am of course let's go ahead and get you buddy into the trade center pretty good genes over here on you but to the trade center you go we have a little bit of overcrowding going on over here. Hopefully, Atsi and Yautel will produce some more such high-quality babies. And I should also take a look at the red-eyed tree frog. Um, looks like we do still have quite a few of you. Good stuff. Quite a few of you are pretty old as well, though. Let's move to the Trade Center. Two males left. That's not necessarily ideal. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up a red-eyed tree frog. Right, red-eyed tree frog. There you are. We need a female, right? Katarina, sure. Adopt you and bring you right in here. Good stuff. Our gorilla has arrived. In the meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a look at how you feel, buddy. Habitat has no keepers assigned. Of course not, because we haven't set up the work zone here. Um, or are we staff? Work zone. Africa West. Go ahead and pull you in over here. Get that solar panel involved as well. Done. Done. Where's our little buddy here? Where are you at? Already run off? They tend to run off when they uh, get delivered, don't they? I, I, so again, I'm sure customers are going to complain about like, oh, I c couldn't see the animal. I like how densely packed the space is. It feels, you know, feels representative. Oh, okay, well, we can confirm that they can climb up over here. Oh, look at this beast. Look at this thing. Oh my God. They're such impressive animals. You are running for an escape route, aren't you? <laughs> you are running for an escape route, aren't you? No, there are none. Oh man, that makes me so happy. That like never happens. They have full access. You're able to, are you able to climb these? You're not able to climb these, eh? You're able to climb this. That's good, but you're not able to climb this. Why not? Why not? Is it, uh, this one's in contact with the ground, but still no luck. Are they just too big for these? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, look at this as well. Able to actually get up over here. Now, these trees are climbable too, but they're not able to climb these, it says. That's a bit of a bummer. I was really hoping they'd use this treehouse using the trees themselves, but if they're just going to use the uh, climbing logs, that's okay too. Oh, sorry. I should actually check. Hold on. What's the situation over here? Social group is, of course, upsetting. That's fair. You don't have one. More than enough space, but I don't think any of us are surprised about that. More than enough climbing as well. Uh, they're happy with the coverage. Uh, there's a little bit of upsetness with some of the plants I'm using, but it's not too bad. It doesn't actually impact their overall uh, happiness by too much. So I think we're okay with that. Just to give us a bit more, you know, um, visual uh, stimulus, I suppose. We do have to get another... Uh, unable to have mates as a beta animal. I guess because you're not... You don't automatically become an alpha. That's pretty interesting that it marks it. I've never noticed, noticed that be marked before. Uh, but that's cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So the enclosure works. That's awesome. That's awesome. Are you going to climb down? What are you going to do, buddy? I'm so excited. I, 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 gorilla, I, I love gorilla. I think they're super cool. Look at that. Just look at this majestic animal. Okay, I'm so pleased. <laughs> wow. 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 What are you going to do, buddy? What are you going to do? Just surveying your realm? What an absolute beast. I can't be the only one, right? I can't be the only one. They just look at the, just the shape of them, the, the, the way they walk, the muscles. Such impressive animals. I'm so happy to just have them in here. Now, uh, keepers should be able to get up over here as well. I believe I've made this ramp appropriately so they can do that. That will hopefully not be a problem. Now, again, guests will complain. I'm sure they will here and there. They'll be like, oh, I couldn't see the gorilla. Well, I'm sorry. I have to create an interesting experience for everybody involved, especially the animals that, you know, are supposed to be a priority. Look at that. Take your phone out. Take your wallet out, too. 
So cool. Uh, so pleased. All right, cool. We need to make sure we get the education boards and stuff in as well. We know that the habitat is working, so that's definitely good to see. We know we have to. We don't have to worry about that. Um, it's just a matter of yeah, sort of taking it to the finish line, adding the visual elements over here. They're able to get up over here. Staff, I'm a hundred percent sure, because otherwise the game gives you a warning as well that staff isn't able to reach a feeding area. So staff is able to get up there as well, which should result in some interesting bit of uh, dynamic here, right? We have our one male. We're going to have multiple females, so hopefully the space will get pretty well used up. We have the toy up front over here, the toys, rather, up front over here, sleeping up front over here, so if anybody comes uh, down this way, they'll, they'll be able to see the gorilla almost guaranteed. Uh, with a sheer quantity of them, some of them are guaranteed as well to be, you know, back over here to get some of their food, uh, so people coming off the train will be able to catch a good look. Uh, and then others getting food in other ways will be able to get it from up over here. I might even add some toys or something up top over here. See if they um, see if they interact up top over here uh, more as a result of that because I think it'd just be cool. Um, man, I'm I'm so pleased. That was such a what a what a wow. Honestly, that was very happy that that happened. Very happy that that happened, folks. On that joyous note, though, I think we're gonna call it a session. Um, oh. Look at. This. so cool uh anyway yeah we are we are gonna call it a session folks i hope you enjoyed this one if you did you know what to do let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below as always it makes a massive difference in how i approach content on the channel what i do more or less of and how i go about doing it if you have any thoughts about this enclosure about how forested it is or how forested it isn't maybe it needs even more trees let me know down below again if you have any thoughts of your own about uh, the uh, you know technical elements of it as well i'd be curious to hear it but i'm i'm quite pleased with how it functions overall i'm pleased with how the animals interacting with it already and that's just the one once we have a full uh, group of gorillas um it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be amazing oh, i'm so i'm so pleased i'm, I'm also just in, in in general pleased to be back with planet zoo folks um very happy to uh to to, to have this return to, to form return to schedule um yeah i'm honestly part of me is just like i just kind of want to like keep working on this but if i do that then this episode might not release on time and that would be uh inappropriate i would say and i don't like doing that so i'm gonna go ahead and call it a session over here folks again i did ho do hope you enjoyed next session we're going to uh do a couple things i mean next session i say we wrap up the gorilla enclosure perhaps and um Apart from the visual effects elements, maybe we maybe we wrap up the gorilla enclosure and do a beauty pass. Maybe we do the sponsor board slash beauty pass thing um, and leave the gorilla enclosure touch ups until later. I don't know. Lots to think about. Y'all let me know what you think. Y'all let me know what you might want to see. Um, I've got uh, I've got a variety of things I need to prioritize. Uh, but for now, that's the session, folks. Again, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.